Crucible tutorial. Today we'll be looking at another replay. This one is a little bit interesting. This was a challenge that someone posted in our Discord where you had to go into the breach map, you and your ally had to be Necrons, and the two opponents had to be Eldar, and this and the AI had to be set to insane. The reason why I wanted to show this off is because it shows a very interesting way to play Necrons, quite different from what I showed off in the detailed guide, but also still a valid way to play them, especially in bigger team games. So let's get started. The start is as usual, you just spam a bunch of scarabs but there is a bit of a difference. So this was my third attempt at doing this challenge, where I tried a few different strategies and due to the AI being insane AI, the other strategies didn't really work as well. So first Scarab, as always, builds three amplification generators, and then the second and third Scarab are sent across the map towards the enemy listening posts, rather than capturing my own. And you'll see why in a minute. Let's skip a little bit past this early game. Standard stuff, just capturing all the different listening posts. As you can see here, capturing two of the enemy listening posts as well, capturing all of my side, and getting some obelisks. As soon as these listening posts are done, I reposition my workers so that they wouldn't get hit straight away. That would need to be the AI would need to focus them down rather than shoot the building, which the AI sometimes does, but not always. Like here, the AI does actually shoot the workers themselves, but it's a bit late, it's already finished. And here the AI stops shooting the building. Whilst at home, I just build up more generators, stuff like that. So here I move the workers back and burrow them. Same thing here, and I'm waiting for, so I'm going to be build a summoning course soon and look to upgrade the listening posts. In the early game, listening posts are quite tanky. As you can see, it's going to take ages for the AI to actually kill them. So I can take my time, get a summoning core, and go from there. So let's skip over a little bit. So as soon as the summoning core is done, I should start... I think I wait a bit on upgrading them until they're actually low. Because I have workers here nearby, I can heal them whenever. So I'm squeezing out as much money as I can at home, building as many generators as I can. And gonna build this at the last moment where, you see? Last moment, just as it's gonna die soon, gets starts building that. I see how fast I can heal it, faster than they can kill my workers. Same here. Workers go back and burrow, and now the AI can no longer contest the, list, the obelisks. It was also quite fortunate in this game that the AI decided to try to build a plasma generator on the side over here, which had its workers get a bit confused. They tried to kept sending workers over here and they kept dying. So standard stuff, getting a second HQ early. The reason for this positioning is that I want to build a wall over here, as you'll see as soon after the HQ finishes. So yeah, one of the key things as well if you're playing greedy with Necrons is that the positioning of your second HQ matters a lot. You want it to be in a nice defensible position. There we go, starting the tomb wall. And there we go, walling off this area. Now, to preface this, this is not a thing you can do on every map. You can't, like, most maps don't have this single choke point thing going on. Oh, there we go, the AI. It's eight minutes, so brood, uh, insane AI has built up its army and is starting to get aggressive now. But yeah, so this is only possible on this map because this map is so because the map is the way it is, but also 
This kind of challenge would be relatively easy on any map with a sh longer rush distance, simply because you would have more time to build up and defend yourself. Where if this was for example Bloodshed Alley, just the time that it would take for the opponents to get to my base would be long enough to where this challenge wouldn't actually be much of a challenge at all. So. This map has its strengths, it has its weaknesses, and I play to both of those. So the wall is fully built and it has its turrets. And another reason to wall off like this is for my ally, where if I didn't wall like this, my ally would try to run into the enemy and die. And because I'm facing two insane AI, I, I can't really build enough force to make an attack work worth it. So if my eye like sends all of their units and dies, then they're going to be at a disadvantage later in the game and will probably lose. So this is also a way to stop the AI from just running in and dying. As you can see, the AI is stuck behind the wall and it's doing a good job of defending it. On harder difficulties, if you're playing with AI allies, tricks like this is stuff you need to learn how to manipulate your allied AI to do what you want. So we're going up to, yeah, we went up to tier one, greater summoning core. This defense is still holding strong. But the catch is the Eldar AI is actually pretty good at teching up, like you will see it go up to tier 3 and elite vehicles, even stuff like the Avatar of Kane. So I need to tech advantage if I really want to get ahead. Granted my ally is pretty good at teching up as well, look at that, they're already tier 3. I'm still... Uh, I think I, yes, I'm tier two, about to go tier three. But again, the AI has cheats, so it has a lot more resources to tech up quicker. And this wall is being very efficient where we're losing very few units and we're getting a lot of enemies. And specifically, this is a line of defense, which means that my AI is not losing their units and it's also holding the enemy off. So there we go, time to go tier three. One thing that might not be obvious here is that there's a lot of micro going on which send with sending workers back and forth to defend and stuff like that. There's a lot of AoE here, so if I were just to keep workers here, they would die a lot. So I need to send them back and forth and change their targeting to so that they're repairing the proper wall. So, Night Scythe. This is my unit of choice before I go for the win. Why Night Scythe? Well, the enemy's main threat. Let's have a look at the enemies here. So let's pause for a second. Guardians, Seer Council, Storm Guardians, not really a threat. What is a threat is all of these platforms and all of these vehicles. They do actually really good anti-structure damage, so they need to be dealt with. Uh, immortals are too slow and Eldar have a habit of pulling back their units. Well, most factions pull back their units when they get low. So as you can see here, the Wave Serpent and try to pull it back. If this was a group of immortals shooting at it, then it would have pulled back and not died. Snight sides can chest. Oh yeah, another terrible thing with this map, the aircraft gets stuck a lot. It's, yeah, this is not a good map. I would not recommend doing this. This was just a suggested challenge. And I was like, hey, let's try this. This sounds like an interesting thing to do. So there we go. You see the night sights are ignoring the infantry and stuff that's not threatening to me and going after specifically anti-vehicle or anti-structure platforms and vehicles. So those are the main threat. My ally also decided to try to summon yeah, a sentry pylon at the enemy. I noticed that the enemy is building a heavy support portal and I want to delay their heavy vehicles as much as possible, so I decide to kill it. So 
There we go. Again, night sights are trying to snipe high priority targets. Pretty sure they get cleaned up here. Yeah. I wouldn't be able, I would pull them back, but they would get stuck on the terrain anyway, and without a jump, they're kind of stuck there, so might as well, may as well try to make use of them rather than just have them get stuck. So. Let's see, there we go, we're going tier 4. I got a crypt tech for detection because the Eldar have a lot of invisible shit. And just more night sights to defend for now. ILA is able to hold their own. They have a nice backline of immortals, even some pariahs, but they have artillery that's starting to bombard us. And specifically, the artillery is very, very dangerous to the workers. So I need to get rid of it pretty quickly. Is that my HQ? That's my allies. And the wall is finally breached. All my workers, as soon as the artillery started shelling it, the workers in the back died and could not maintain the wall. But tier 4 is nearly done, so we just need to hold on for a little bit longer. So this is a very, it's not even all that greedy because I'm on two HQs. I could not justify spending any more resources at economy. So this is very much a timing where I'm looking for a specific timing. So the timing was night sides to defend and cause a bunch of chaos and damage to the enemy and then tech up to a different timing. This is a thing normally not really possible with other factions because on two HQs you just don't have enough power to go for any sort of titans but because of how necrons work you can actually go for big titans on relatively low power economy if you save up for it. Again, night side's getting stuck. If this was coded properly so that uh, aircraft wouldn't get stuck this defense would be so much easier but we work with what we got. And soon, yeah, building some sterilization obelisks. An interesting thing, so sterilization obelisks, right, very important, don't want to lose them, but they also shoot units around them in an AOV, which is quite good at dealing with swarms. So whilst you don't want them to be the front line due to their squishy nature, you do want sterilization obelisks to be part of your defense if you want to be super optimal. You could just have them at the very back and that's it, but there is a case to be made for having them near the front like this so that they can shoot these lasers. You see these lasers coming from the sky? That's the sterilization obelisks. And they do decent damage. It's not, ama it's not amazing, but every little helps. So the Eldar figured out how to get Raid Guard and they have their uh, ranged super heavy vehicles as well. So this is getting bad and the Necron ally is spending most of their resources on more tech rather than more units. Well, actually, sorry, they're probably... let me check. Yeah, they're f they're mostly full on supply. That's why they spent all their resources on that stuff instead of units. Makes sense. Okay, and this is the unit that I was looking to get. 22 minute doomsday monolith in an active defensive situation. Yes, you can get this a lot faster in a perfect scenario or with allies feeding your money, but this was done when I in a situation where I had to actively defend and also um where yeah, and also without any help from allies. So if allies could not feed me power And there we go. Avatar of Cain finally fully broke the wall. And once they're through here and they spread out, it's a lot diff more difficult to deal with, especially since stuff like the Doomsday Monolith has an AoE. Yeah, Micaring it back and forth. Relatively simple stuff. Micaring stuff back. Uh, 
And there we go, with the avatar of Kane that all of the vehicles that are stuck in here, yeah, as you can see, this is doing a lot better. And the, one of the reasons why I teleported this to my allies base is that allies will try to repair your units if they're close to them. So teleporting to the ally, I could use their defenses to protect myself, but I could also get them to repair me as well. So again, just manipulating the AI ally to do what you want it to do. Now I'm going for a support of pariahs. Doomsday Bondlet is good, sure, but it struggles against single targets. So pariahs will be a good supplementary unit. And at this point the game is basically done. As soon as I got the Doomsday and it fired for like a minute, this game it was over, but it was sketchy for like the first 20 minutes where the build order had to be quite precise. If I got more economy, I would have died because I needed those night sides. The wall would have been breached way earlier if I didn't have them. And if I got stuff and if I had less economy, I wouldn't have been on time, where the Avatar of Cain just breached the wall as the Doomsday finished. Yeah, at this point, Mobile Obelisks are very good use of late game vehicle cap, because they are basically your artillery piece. And there we go. Pariah upgrades, yep. Yeah. Getting the Pariah upgrade. And soon this, uh, the army of Pariahs will be sent out. The Cryptic die? Oh, the Cryptic died at some point. Yeah. I'll probably remember to revive him. And there we go. You see the AI kind of slowing and calming down a bit because its massive wave has been dealt with and they are struggling to produce quick enough. Another reason why the Eldar production is a bit higher and they feel tougher than other factions is because they, instead of having a few big production buildings, they're able to produce out of all of their webway gates as well. Oh, they have a web sale. Interesting. Thankfully, they don't have any resources to use a web sale. So yeah, this is insane AI that uh, I've been doing so much damage to that they don't yeah they don't have the build up of resources in order to build any bigger units thankfully if they did I might have been in trouble there we go teleporting to them stay forward and at this point the game is over so yeah so the few core things that happened there oh yeah building more HQs now that I so if this game was on a bigger map, right, this is the follow-up where you just get more economy and go up to tier 5, the super heavy thermoplasma, heavy thermoplasma generator and stuff like that. But since this is such a tiny map, the this is basically over. So yeah, so the core things here. First of all, being able to capture these two listening posts bought me a lot of time, like a lot, a lot of time, where the attack wave that hit the listening posts would have hit this wall before it was finished, where they hit around eight minutes, eight minutes would have been here. So if you can put as many listening posts as possible between you and the AI, that is very helpful because the AI will stop and try to consolidate themselves after they capture a few listening posts, they'll try to cap them, they'll try to put a list, uh, an actual fortification on them before moving on. So that's a quite an def effective delay tactic against the AI. And then secondly, just this whole wall. It might have, it probably didn't look all that impressive, but there was a lot of micromanaging that was put into making sure that this wall stays and that it doesn't just get uh, destroyed. So, yeah. There we go. This is the follow-up. Two more HQs. 
heavy, super heavy thermoplasma generator, more uh, resources, and I went up from around 250 to 500 eco, pretty relatively quickly. If you're wondering about some other strategies, rushing one of the AIs doesn't work because the distance between their bases is so small that any of the AI will easily build into the other space. And then, you know, sure, you've spent... Oh, there we go. The AI got a Titan. Nice. So yeah, 32 minute Titan for the AI. That's actually pretty good. So yeah, so... um. What happens is that one of the AI will build into the other space, and so they're still using the same amount of resources, and sure, they don't have nearly as much income, but the AI on Insane is not nearly as reliant on their income, so they don't really care. And that was that. Hopefully this was interesting and informative. Again, this will not work every game. You can't just go up to tier three, I think, for Night Sights, and then just tier four for Doomsday. It will not work every game, but there are some games, especially bigger team games, where this will work. And hopefully this showed you a way in order to do that. So, see you guys in the next one.